I really feel like we've done a bad job getting to know our fellow Druze people. So each color here represents a part of the Druze religion, right? Within the Druze religion, you can't convert into it, right? And you guys believe in the concept of reincarnation. Reincarnation, definitely. Why is it known that Druze have like the best knuffin? And this is a little look at you guys see the local village in here. Longest graffiti in uh, Israel. This is our Che Guevara, the most famous uh, artist in Arabic music in all time. We're gonna actually take you to some sites. Going to uh, the monastery, Elijah's monastery. Oh my God. What a historical place. And the view is just wow. This is a cemetery. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is kind of the core of this series. Salamu alaikum, my friends, and welcome back to Daliat al Kalmed here in the north of Israel. I am being hosted by a wonderful family here in the north who I'm going to introduce you guys in a little bit, but we're about to sit down for a beautiful Drew-style good morning breakfast. I'm so excited for this. We got the pita. We got some fried cheese, it looks like, some tuna, some omelet, a bunch of delicious vegetables and cheeses. I'm very excited. This is my friend, Ahed. Hello. How are you? you doing all right i'm good he's good hosting to me you. today we're gonna be good going to around you. and show you guys this place in a bigger more in-depth look but uh first things first we got to power up with some breakfast absolutely let's do it that. yes Mazet, what is this cheese it's cheese uh, yeah it's an arabic cheese it's really good like uh or it's, uh, it looks like halloumi almost okay let's try it out i usually love fried cheese mm, amazing good wow so good. I love the style of breakfast here too. You know, across the Middle East, wherever you are, usually breakfasts are like this, full of fresh vegetables, lots of cheeses, lots of eggs. It's the best way to start the day in my opinion. All right, so I'm gonna give a big plug here right now to Ahed. Ahed is a tour guide here in Israel. He's got an organized tour group. You guys go check him out right now. I'm gonna leave all this stuff in the description, but if you need a tour guide in Israel, number one choice, guys, highly recommend. He's amazing. I've watched videos on him. That's how I actually got in touch with him. But we're gonna head out right now. He's gonna give me sort of an inside look on Drew's life here more insight onto the village that I've been to a few times but don't really know too much about history. I'm really, really excited for this. We're hopping in this car right now and we're gonna take a ride around. Yalla? Yalla, let's go. Yalla, Habibi. Yalla. Let's hit it. In Spanish, uh, Mexican, they say orale. Orale. Yeah. Vamos. Vamos, orale. You learned many languages, I'm assuming, being a tour guide, no? You learned to pick many, uh, many sentences. Yeah. What's your favorite group of people that you work with? Who's the most fun? Who's the most rowdy? Can I say Filipinos? <laughs> Be good, good for my YouTube channel. <laughs> I guess I find uh, the way to anybody's heart. Once you pick uh, deep, you find uh, beautiful people all around. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good answer right there. <laughs> Alrighty, stop number one. A very quick drive over. Where are we? In the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Usually uh, tourists don't see this neighborhood. This is how we live. This is a local shop or a kiosk selling uh, hot dogs, uh, all sorts of uh, beverages. A nice place and we could uh, sit down. I was just laughing with Ahit. It's like, it says Evans Drugstore and then there's a picture of a hot dog. It's just like, keep them guessing. Like, what actually is this place, you know? <laughs> but there you, go. you got you got ice creams, you got candies, you got drinks, and you got hot dogs. Really? Drugs, I don't know, but you got everything else. <laughs> we are in a local town in Dalet El Carmel. This is one of the the uh, biggest actually neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. We call it Suwania. Suwania is a Flintstone neighborhood. Anywhere you dig, you find flints. Flints they used to make uh, weapons in uh, ancient times. Right. Not long ago, they found a site actually in the beginning of uh, Dalet el Carmel. Supposedly, it would be a factory of flint. Mm. You see houses, uh, second story, third story maybe buildings. They were not allowed to build over four. Mm. Because the foundation is not that uh, strong for to hold uh, more than four stories uh, up. People that live or born here, usually they continue living here. It's culturally uh, speaking, there's no mobility to the cities. Uh, people actually that born here would build their own home, mm. here, their own house. Sometimes in top of the house of the parents, and sometimes in a different uh, neighborhood, but still in the same area. So there's like an incentive for Jewish people to stay, like uh, like within the religion or culturally i wouldn't call it incentive because usually incentives refer to some sort of uh, like you're gonna benefit money. yeah 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 uh, but no this is a cultural cultural thing. thing cultural thing however things are changing because the country does not give us uh, more more land that's why people are renting now mm. if not in dalet el carmel maybe in osifia the next town maybe in haifa you know young couples they don't have the money to buy land and lands are being very very expensive today so things things are changing People are moving out slowly, slowly, but uh, this is what's happening. Time. Oh, beautiful. 
<laughs> we're just having very philosophical, deep life conversations right now. <laughs> These are stuff that we're going to expand on in the vlog today as well, because we're going to actually take you to some sites, including like a cemetery and a high viewpoint. These are places where I want to talk to you guys about this stuff. But right now I'm getting, I had this giving me like some real insight on Drew's philosophy and life lessons and stuff that I did not know about before. It's actually remarkable hearing this stuff, man. You know, it's like, I, I can't believe I've gone my whole life without knowing, you know? Every day you learn something new. Yeah. Well, well, it's very, very exciting. I think the collaboration of cultures like this and, and getting to learn, especially when, again, like... I love it's, that sound right there, by the way. <laughs> the most Chinese. international sound that's ever existed. The Bluetooth device has been <laughs> that is the most international sound. It's now an elevator because all the elevators Have are Bluetooth? made in China <laughs> yeah. and they Bluetooth and the same uh, same one is doing this Bluetooth is doing the elevator. Mefo, where did the inspiration come from to make hot dogs here? I have no inspiration, but uh, once I work at the restaurant and I all, uh, always uh, thought that I will uh, open my own place. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, up and down. <laughs> <laughs> smells good in here. So you got the hot dogs going over here. You got the bun. Oh, thank you, good sir. Exciting. Got a nice hot dog over here. You got pickles and trina? Pickles and trina. This is the most Middle Eastern hot dog I've seen in my yeah. life. Look at that tahini sauce and pickles on a hot dog. The New Yorkers who are still watching my videos, what do you think about that? This man also lived in New York for quite a while. Yeah, <laughs> you inspired me, New York. <laughs> it's awesome. A trina hot dog. I never thought I would see that in my life. That's amazing. All right, here's our little afternoon munch. Mm, that's great. Good hot dog. Mm. Delicious. Yeah, the home. Is the home. <laughs> it is a hot one, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're actually making you ready uh, for help. Just <laughs> one degree below help. That's the uh, that's the goal in the Middle East. You prepare for it. So where are we uh, where are we going into right now? Going to uh, uh, Mufraka, the mm -hmm. monastery, Elijah's monastery. It happens to be in Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. This is where the uh, biblical challenge took place when uh, Elijah the prophet actually was challenging uh, the Baal prophets. Who's gonna? Who's the right uh, uh, the rightful owner for the word God? So it happens here. So let's go and see it. And this is a significant place for Druze, but for also other religions in the area? Or? It's mainly today a monastery as uh, the name. It's uh, referred to the Christian. Christian, uh, okay. Christian. However, I can uh, see a big group of, I'm pretty sure, Filipino Christians that are here right now. So that makes yeah, sense. This place is visited by... Uh, by every all all sorts of uh, people from uh, all uh, all religions actually also the jews they come here christians of course the catholic the protestant the orthodox everywhere this is where the biblical challenge took place this is everything started here with the belief of one god the, the monotheistic uh, message came actually from here from right it's here huh? spread roots in here wow that's amazing and to think that up until an hour ago i didn't really know this place existed I feel kind of embarrassed no, I don't be. The world is big, but uh, just like you, I want to be like you one day <laughs> to travel so many countries and meet so many people. Yeah, man. But it's going to happen one day. For sure. He's yeah. going to come visit me in the Philippines at some point. That's if happening. In, if in not in this incarnation, for the next in incarnation. In the next one. <laughs> I love it. So here you go. Place of, uh, fire. The scaled Carmelite order. All right, so we got a quick five minutes. No, but I'll take you to the uh, to the scoping point. There's mm -hmm. another scoping point. Okay. You have to go. Don't worry about it. It's going to be just as awesome. Okay. So this building is the... Sometimes you got to bend the rules. Yeah, 100%. Especially here in this country. You can do whatever you want, really. Yeah. So as long as you smile at the end. <laughs> what is the saying? It's like, ask for forgiveness. Do the bad thing first and ask for forgiveness later. It's true. Oh, whoa. Oh, my God. All right, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> Wow. Welcome to Dalat El Carmel. Wow. Oh, whoa. Oh my God. The Jezreel Valley, uh, the Kishon River that runs down there. Of course, instead of the Kishon, I'm, I'm seeing trucks and, you know, <laughs> but we are in 2022. Uh, it's long, long, long ago. You see, from here, you can see uh, Kishon, Mount Hermon. Is that the Khermon right there? Ma no, you can't, you can't see, see it. Hermon, it's too. But it's it's foggy today. Yeah. Wow. This is an unbelievable view. Jerusalem is uh, that direction. Today and Samaria. This is the Armageddon. This is with the Judgment Day. It's Megiddo or Har Armageddon. Har Megiddo is the mountain of Megiddo. Where Megiddo. where where Judgment Day will take place? Yes. According to many prophecies in Christianity. Really. Also in Judaism, this is. 
the place that it's gonna take. Wow. And that's a airport? This is the Jezreel Valley. This is an airport. It's a military airport. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. This is the Silicon Valley, uh, one of the towns surrounded uh, the Jewish towns of uh, Yokneam, uh, surrounding the, the side, the eastern side of uh, Dalet el Karme. Yeah, so this is the monastery here? This is the monastery. Now, uh, when we talk the Mohraka, or this place, actually, we are referring to the uh, biblical story of Elijah the prophet fighting the false prophets, the Baal. It happened here. I guess he wanted to bring uh, the message of uh, monotheism to this place that was very pagan-like. They believe that uh, many uh, gods, the Baal gods, would bring them water and they would pray for them day and night and they would put sacrifices. It's ridiculous, but uh, once upon a time it used to be something hip, I guess, in. <laughs> uh, so it happened here when Elijah came to them and told them, okay, prove me that your prophets, the Baal prophets, are the, the right one, the original one. Uh, they would set a altar of 12 stones they would put the sacrifice in top and they would uh, start praying to the baal prophets they would pray and would pray and would pray nothing nobody nobody's answering i guess nobody's home so elijah is even going further and making uh, fun of them and he's telling them they might be asleep at this time you should maybe raise your voice maybe they didn't hear you and they would go on and on and on and they would not answer the prayer uh, Elijah tell him it's not it's enough now I'm gonna prove you who's the uh, right God he would set a 12 stone altar he would put the sacrifice and he would even go among and he would pour water and would drench the entire sacrifice with water and he would start praying to God the God that we know today uh, and asking to put fire in this uh, altar and exactly this is God is answering his uh, prayer and he put fire uh, and he proved to everybody that uh, our God is the rightful God. From here, he would chase from Mount Carmel, he would chase the false prophets or these Baal prophets into the Kishon River where he massacres them uh, and the blood would flow all over. So this is where it happened. The place of burn or the Muhraka, it's, this is where they put the fire in the altar. Happened right up here. They happened right up here. Wow, yes. that's amazing. That's incredible. What a historical place. And the view is just wow unprecedented it's amazing and elijah you were telling me earlier i don't remember if we recorded it or not but elijah is the reincarnation in Druze religion we have our uh, own incarnation of elijah and he represent uh, actually the red uh, the red color in our flag that represent the soul elijah represent the soul since we believe in reincarnation we believe that many uh, many of our prophets they incarnated to many events in many uh, places in many religions i was uh, talking to tal earlier about uh, how i spoke about jethro mm. uh, the most important prophet to us that represent the mind the same jethro that actually helped moses get away from the pharaoh along with the israelite and go to the promised uh, land it happened because jethro jethro helped moses by explaining to him about social justice about explaining to him how to appoint ministry of thousands ministry of hundreds ministry of fifties ministry of tens and if you look around you this is uh, the formation of any government i know this happens 3200 years ago by jethro jethro is to us is the green is the most important uh, prophet so uh, <laughs> this is one one of uh, our incarnated prophet elijah this is him yeah this is him according to western culture uh, from Nazareth. Yeah. Actually, a uh, very artistic uh, sculptor. Really, really good. Uh, he did that. Right there. This is showing Elijah stepping uh, in top of the neck of a false prophet. One of them. I have a question for you, more philosophical, a little bit deep. So, in that, in the theory in, in Jewish culture that people are reincarnated in that belief, like Jethro and Elijah, is it believed by people that Elijah and Jethro exist with us now as well? Like they've been reincarnated into the modern day? We still haven't received any messages yet. <laughs> I mean, the world is getting uh, more and more. Maybe they are waiting in patience until something happens and then they're gonna remove their hands and uh, do something about it. I'm not sure. When I meet them, I will. Uh, talk to them maybe <laughs> i get some insights so that's a uh, one last look for you guys before we leave here of the catholic monastery and then there's the uh, statue of elijah slaying the false prophet a little tip for you guys when you're doing a trail in israel we just got on a little bit of a side trail here these little markings are trail markings in israel so if you're ever hiking or something and you want to see one of these 
each trail marker, each different color, I think signifies a different level, right, of difficulty? It's, it's, uh, yeah, uh, also, uh, up to uh, 10 kilometers mm. or 12 kilometers more like. Uh, yeah. But of course, uh, the other one, the, high, the longest one is the... Uh, the Israel the National trail. trail, yeah. And that one would be orange, blue, and white. And it's in certain segments. But if you're following a trail, you got these little guys pointing you in the right direction. Yeah, and Balut is actually the fruits of the oak, the mm. oak tree. It's not edible if you are considering uh, <laughs> however in ancient time they used to make some sort of a coffee mm, beverage out of balut. beverage out of balut they used to ground it you were telling me you've done some uh, tours for filipinos before right oh yes you ever heard about what balut is in the philippines no really no balut uh, from your uh, from your vibe i'm getting i did something really horrible well the you know beauty is in the eye of the beholder but balut <laughs> in southeast asia is generally a duck egg, a duck egg that you uh, let it grow the embryo halfway and then you kill it and eat it semi-developed. I need to show you a picture. Oh my god. It's yeah. like, like it's actually, a chicken have an abortion to your stomach. Similar, actually very similar idea, yeah. You're pretty much aborting oh the fetus god. into your mouth. When you're drunk, it's pretty delicious, I have to say. Not really? Yeah. <laughs> but you got to drink some beer before you eat it. Wow, this is an amazing view, guys. Check it out. Besides our gruesome conversation about duck embryos. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this is awesome. Wow. Crazy that this is the land of our ancestors, huh? I always think about that when I get up on these big views in, in Israel. It's unbelievable. This is where we're from. So cool. Our ancestor murdered some people right down there. False prophets. The river goes along the main road down there? That's the path. Okay, it's not even exposed anymore. All right, Senor, where have you brought me to now? So this is the uh, soccer stadium, the local soccer stadium. This used to be a few years ago, I would say uh, six years ago. To be a grayish, very, very uh, monotonous, very boring uh, wall, like a cement wall. There was some uh, talks about actually making something of it, and this became actually the uh, longest graffiti in uh, Israel. I think uh, it stretches uh, 520 meters. Crazy. Uh, of uh, freestyling holds many significances, but also touches the Druze community here that live. You could see our uh, Che Guevara. He used to be, but better looking than Che Guevara. <laughs> Uh, it's our Che Guevara, Sultan Bash al Atrash. You'll see him in a second. So, We're gonna right take a walk over there. Yes. Is this all different artists that made this, or it's, it's the same artists that came with many artists? Ah. Like, uh, you know. That's cool. It's super cool. That's uh, that's the Hamza, the yes. against the evil eye, no? Against the evil eye. Yeah. But I guess the evil eye these days are, is very much stronger than the hand. So. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, you'll see this symbol across the Middle East. It's very, very, very popular symbol. And you might ask yourself, what is the Simpson doing in Dalit el Carmel? I can't answer. Sir, that this is secret. He came in a secret mission. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. Bugs Bunny also looks uh, a little elevated. <laughs> Everybody sees something. I mean, you see Manila here. I see New York. Somebody I see Manhattan. I see Manhattan in there. Manhattan. Yeah, it looks like New York City. This is Sultan Bashar Atras. This is our Che Guevara. See how much better looking than Che Guevara. Here? <laughs> He's a handsome man. Handsome it's a man. nice mustache. He's a handsome uh, revolutionary. Started the revolution against the French in Syria. He drove the Syrian in 1925 uh, with uh, just a few soldiers, few, few Druze uh, soldiers in the mountain. That they fought uh, ferociously. Uh, they fought the French and they drove them out of the country uh, and next to it uh, this would be the star and um, it's a form our our flag it could be in a uh, five color so each color here represents a part of the Druze religion right yes like i said the jews actually believe that uh, the world was created in six days and god decided to rest in Sabbath. the Druze see it differently the Druze think that God does not get tired. He does not need a day off. He created uh, everything in a split second. You may call it uh, the Big Bang, whatever you want to call it, but this is what it happened. The mind is the most important thing. Red is the soul. The yellow is the word or the first, vo the first truth to be told from that void. The blue is the precedent, what was before, and the white is the following. These are the five essence of the Druze religion. It's very spiritual. It has nothing to do with nationality. This would be our religious flag. This flag, you might see it in Syria, you might see it in Lebanon, you might see it in Jordan, and you might see it in the diaspora where the Druze live uh, everywhere in the world. This represents them and them only. This is Farid al-Atrash. Farid Al-Atrash is one of our own, we take pride. The Oud Virtioso in, in the world, the best, uh, the most famous uh, artist uh, in Arabic music in all time. His songs are everywhere, 
everywhere you go in Dalia. He was from a Druze family, Al Atrash, and they migrated to Egypt. Uh, there he grew up along with his uh, sister Asmahan. She used to be also a very famous singer. Uh, she was murdered in Egypt, but she has a great voice. Her name is Asmahan. Look her up. They are Druze from uh, Druze Mountain in Syria. Wow. So he's, uh, you know, fa very famous to us. And yeah. he's Daoud. Daoud is a very nice instrument that everybody would love to play. Is there any, any discernible difference between Druze music to the rest of music from the Levant and Arabian uh, sort of style? Not really, no. no? Uh, Arabic music is uh, mainly Arabic music, mm -hmm. maybe a few touches, maybe a few instruments added here and there, but it's uh, no, it's Arabic music is uh, diverse, so yeah, you could see it, uh, listen to it in different ways. Do you guys have a Druze New Year? No, we don't. Uh, we don't celebrate because uh, you see what happened here in Israel. The Jews, they have so many holidays. They took, they left nothing for us, mm. so we don't have any more holidays because we don't have in the calendar any more days any to more take off because of the Jews. <laughs> they have so many holidays. We do have a lot of holidays yeah. within the Druze religion you can't convert into it right because like if i wanted to become druze tomorrow you have to be born born uh, to this faith uh, you have to have a druze mother and a druze father anybody that lived in that area uh, actually got this message and read it if they liked it they embraced it if they did not like it they say no thank you and that's it a very peaceful uh, whoever embraced it became a Druze. This happened not many years after, 1043 to the exact. They started actually massacring the new Druze or the new faith because they did not take it nice. This was in uh, Egypt. This was in Egypt at that time. From that moment on, 1043, they shut the gates of this religion. And from that moment, you cannot join the religion. In order for you to become Druze, you have to be born to a Druze father and a Druze mother. Uh, so no, Tal, you cannot join. I'm so sorry. Even though we, we need uh, we need many people like you. <laughs> uh, Thank you, my but, brother. But uh, I'll speak to my super, supervisor. Okay, see if you can slide me. I yeah. have I have 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. Oh, I can, maybe, And do a lot yeah, of good for maybe, Druze people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Maybe you guys, if any definitely. Druze people are watching, maybe comment down below in the description. Hashtag Tal's Druze now. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are continuing from here. To give you guys some more insight, I want to I wanna explain from my perspective a little bit. I explained this in a video I made already about the Druze community, but I want to reiterate the point. Like, for me and for many people who are probably watching, this video if there are many Israelis that are watching this video I feel like a lot of Israeli citizens or Jewish Israeli citizens to put a finer point on it have done a disservice to what I consider our Druze brothers and sisters by not caring or entertaining the ideas and the and the desires and the aspirations of the Druze community I truly have come to learn about this the last two days being with Ahad and being yesterday in the town of Dalia walking around here and the day before meeting other Druze people and talking to them about this stuff. I really feel like we've done a bad job getting to know our fellow Druze people who live in this country with us. This whole experience of being here has been so eye-opening. I've learned so much. The feeling that I'm getting inside of me is like a true, true feeling of brotherhood. However you identify, whatever religion you come from, but like a shared passion for this land. For, for wanting to be here and wanting to be here together. And I mean, there's there's been some truly shocking things that I've heard as well in the negative side, but I feel like if there's anything that I can do through this video, the main point is to invigorate, to implore you to ask questions, to care, to, to give a damn about the community of people that live here. Not in a sense where you need to feel bad about them, or feel bad for them, but in a sense of like actually caring for the people who live in this country with you. And that's something as an Israeli citizen, I feel like I have not done well enough. You know, it's like something I feel like we should be doing more. That's a big part of why I'm making this video and this video series in whole. And having the insight from Ahad on this community has been so amazing. I've learned so much in just a few hours being together. Imagine what you could do with one month. <laughs> well, I'm going to start looking for an apartment, that's for sure. <laughs> and look at this view, man. It's so beautiful. This is Osefia. There is a, uh, a valley uh, between us both. Osefia is a little higher up, right? Uh, yeah. And this is a little look. You guys see the local village in here. All right, I had claims it's time for some sugar. Some sugar, yeah. Some <laughs> sugar needed. Why is it known that those have like the best knafe? Like Jewish Israelis come from a lot of places just to Dalia and to Sofia to have knafe. The people swear by it. First time ever, I ever came to Dalia like five years ago was because of the knafe. Like why do you think you have this reputation? Okay, uh, let me correct that reputation okay. for uh, the sake of fairness. Okay. okay. I have many friends in Israel. I have many friends in Nazareth. I love you. Uh, of Nazareth and I must say that the best knafe started in Nazareth mm. okay I take pride of who I am and my town and everything 
but knafe parid in nazar. Just the people of Dalia took it a notch up. That's it. <laughs> I love That's it. it. <laughs> but we still, uh, the origin is nazar. You we honor it there, exactly. yeah. So you would uh, be the judge of yeah. that. I'll be the judge. This will be like my fifth or fourth uh, knafe in Dalia, but uh, every single one of them has been a 10 out of 10 so far, so I'm excited for this one as well. Okay, kanafe. This, I have to say, just off the bat, looking at it, looks phenomenal. It looks really good. Look at the cheese on this one. Oof. Wow. Oh, it's goat and uh, buffalo. Oh my god. That is a good one, brother. You know, stretchy cheese on the bottom. The kadaif noodles, too, are like so... These ones are cooked perfectly. The right way. Yeah. Okay, this is significantly better than the one I had yesterday, for sure. Mm. There's so much more cheese here as well. I love it. Well, when you guys uh, when you guys come visit Ahed in uh, Dalia, you know where to come to as well now with the knafe. He's got the spots, he's got the recommendations, he got it all here. That was one of the best knafes I've ever had in my entire life. Seriously, that was uh, that was one of the best knafes I've ever had, I think. That was amazing. It was really good. Excellent. Next level stuff. Okay, Ahed is gonna go into a little bit more of a deeper explanation on the dress of the more religious Jews. So yes, the, the mustache. So, uh, yeah, speaking of the mustache, it uh, signifies uh, men, Jews, men. And they actually, mustache is a very meaningful uh, symbol because it hides actually the mouth. Out of that mouth, of course, a, a word of love, a word of hate comes out. And uh, the words could be swords sometimes could kill. Mm. Could kill with your mouth. That's why it's the way to bring it down a little, to be humble in your thoughts and your words. So it's very important. The Kaluse, the actual hat, it's a daily hat. But when they go to the worship place, the Khilwe, place of worship, uh, they go with a different, different kind of uh, hat. Is it similar to, to what the belief is in Judaism and Islam of like having something above you? Like uh, yeah. reminding God, you of God? God? Look, God is God. We refer to it as uh, God. We refer to it as Allah. We refer to it as the Almighty. We refer to it as Adonai, Hashem. It has many, many names. And in Arabic uh, alone, there are 99 names of God. Uh, meaning you cannot uh, put God in one word. I mean, God is everything. God is one. Uh, we believe. We all believe in the same God. Believe it or not, it's not like there are. There is a God for the Jews, God for the Muslim, God for the Christian. No, it's monotheistic religion, and if they all uh, seek one God. The pants are also pants. a little different, right? They... Yeah, uh, pants is actually something very comfortable. You know, these are the, the one that is uh, very loose uh, in the top, and it's because of practicality, my friend. Because imagine uh, sitting on the floor because uh, in our uh, place of worship we don't have chairs oh really in the khilwe there's no in the khilwe, there are no chairs no chairs so you're standing the whole time no you do, you don't stand you you sit you oh sit on, the on the floor okay on the floor and imagine sitting down with the jeans it's not very comfortable right especially if you have to sit like uh, buddhist like uh, for many hours uh, so you uh, you sit with a shirwal you sit with that uh, pants but it's actually the most comfortable one. If somebody who was not Druze were to walk around with the with the head covering, with a mustache, with the shawal, would it be seen as an offensive thing, or like would it be seen as a, like you know like something no, disrespectful? I, I, I don't think anybody in his rightful mind would do such thing. Right. We need to uh, learn to respect others. It's a level of respect and uh, definitely keeping something sacred for one culture. Yes. There you go. So this is a this is a cemetery. This is a cemetery. Where? Uh, practicality in the Jews' religion is a very very important thing. The land is uh, meant for the live one, and not for the dead. We should not take so much land for burial. That's why we bury this way in order for us to respect the body. We bury our dead in the same place, and we bury people on top of people. No problem. We don't have to worry about uh, stones, about writing names, about writing dates. If you ask me where is my grandfather is buried, I tell you I have no idea, you and I really don't care. Mm. And I know, but he's somewhere else in his soul. Mm. He, he traveled somewhere else. You see, there is now no nothing, no names. Um, you can't even really tell where so it's like this. Somebody, somebody's buried like right yeah. here. And you guys believe in the concept of reincarnation? Reincarnation, definitely. We believe that the uh, soul, once it leaves the body, the moment of his uh, death. It travels actually and it enters to a newborn baby. Mm -hmm. This is the circle of life. This is how we believe and think about it this way. Let's assume there is uh, such thing called a judgment day. You go as Tal, I go as Ahed. 
Uh, we are in front of God and I am God. This is Ahed. What's the verdict? It's not, it's not right. Because before Ahed, I was somewhere else and somebody else. A different color, a different ethnicity, a different country, a different person altogether. So I'm judged according to my, my soul, what it remembers. The soul actually, when it travels the body and leaves the body, takes all the consciousness with it. Uh, it's like a hard drive, a big hard drive that travel and goes uh, into a newborn baby. And then again, it accumulated memories, accumulated knowledge, and so on and so forth. It cannot be ended as the Ahed is dead, period, bury him, and that's it. It does not work this way. Ahed has to continue to experience it in a different form, a different name, a different color, a different place, a different religion maybe. According to the rocks, this person just passed away. I'm not sure who this person is. Does it say it all? No. Because there is no, nothing, no name. It's just marking as a fresh grave. But the most important thing, that his soul went somewhere else now. Now it's a newborn baby. We should not weep too much for the dead. Because uh, the death is uh, the beginning of uh, new Something life. new. Yeah. And you can technically encounter them again, right? Like, yeah. they're here. Yeah. Every once in a while, the soul remembers its old incarnation. And most likely, people that uh, die in young age, they tend to remember their old incarnation. Ahed and I have summarized that this was the birth of a brand new, deep, great friendship. And uh, we definitely, it's not, we're not going to be able to cover everything we want in one video. Ahed actually has to go home because tomorrow his kids are starting school and he's got stuff to do. But I want to ask you some deeper questions. And you don't have to go for too long on them because I want you to be able to cover everything. But two things that are really important for me to ask. One. Being Druze in Israel, I've been learning a lot about it and I don't want to speak for you or for your people, for your religion. But like, can you give me a little bit of a brief summary, a touch of what, how you feel at the moment with, with everything that I've learned about the government and how people have treated Druze people here? Just a little bit of a summary. Look, after all, I love my life in Israel. This is the bottom line. However, uh, in any democratic country, there is some sort of always looking for a better life even in democratic countries. I think as a minority, we're not getting enough. I think we should uh, receive so much more uh, because after all, we are citizens of Israel, regardless to our religion. I consider myself as an Arab. I speak Arabic. I grew up in uh, Arabic region, uh, speaking Arabic, eating uh, Middle Eastern food. Now, if I hold a different religion, this is a different story. It does not make me someone else. I'm still an Arab, but I have a Druze religion. My religion is my business, okay? Uh, I'm here to uh, present it as is. Uh, I respect uh, the, Jew the Jewish synagogues, and I respect the uh, Christian churches, and I respect the Muslim mosques, and I uh, expect to, uh, to see also people respect me as a Druze, as a minority in this country. This is uh, my message to whomever. Uh, after all, uh, we are all uh, brothers and sisters. Um, we are all human. We are all uh, have the need to love and be loved. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is kind of the core of this series. And I think by understanding the voices of minorities and different demographics in this country, it's the best way that I and the people watching this can understand maybe a solution to the conflict. I'm curious, two things. How has this conflict affected your life? your history, your lineage, and and what kind of hope do you see for the future? What, what would you want to see? Where do you uh, think this is going? I know uh, it's big, look, but... I'm, uh, yeah, but I'm, uh, I'm uh, easy going, uh, and I uh, see the glass half full. I'm an optimistic person. I think I have uh, actually a recipe that could lead us somehow to peace. Okay. Uh, and that recipe, in my eyes, it's uh, that the Jews here uh, would know Arabic like I know Hebrew. Meaning, in order for you uh, to understand a nation, to understand a culture, you need to speak its language. You cannot be here with Arab people as Jew and not speak the language, the Hebrew language. It's not, it's not supposed to be. Usually uh, I did not uh, mention Jews, uh, religious people, they pray. They have two days actually of prayer a week. 
so they have two days of prayer every Sunday evening and every Thursday evening these are the two uh, sacred days that uh, Jews uh, religious of course religious must be religious mm -hmm. in order for you to go to a Hilwe uh, to the place of worship if you're not you're not allowed to even if you are a Jews to become religious of course there is a ceremony and there is a uh, process you need to go through usually it takes three months of actually going and somehow getting into the religion it needs to be a committee a religious committee that would uh, call the shots would uh, actually quiz you and examine you and see if you really really mean it that's why they give you three months in order for you to be to be sure is this is the right uh, thing for you uh, usually the age of uh, going back to the religion it's usually at the age of 40 after the age of 40 uh, usually you are more knowledgeable about life you most likely got married, most likely have kids, most likely, uh, you know, you conceive reality a different uh, way. That's the time that you are usually go back to the religion or ask for to be uh, given Religious. the right uh, to be uh, in this place. Well, so after the age of 40 is when you can get accepted to the higher part and of the religion. You could join at any age, but usually people, that's what they do mm -hmm. when, when they want to become religi religious or they have the enlightenment somehow, it hit them usually after the age of 40. After 40, wow. Yeah. Do you guys have any special book that is in the room or that uh, people read while you're in there? Or is well, it... of course, these are the religious books. Right. Uh, uh, look, the religious books, they stay under, like, it's a very secretive religion. Right, that's also that's something I never explained. Open, yeah. It's not open to, it's not like you go to the library and you could get it or go to Stimatsky and, and buy it. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to happen. However, the religion is uh, very... Uh, accessible to, to the religious people mm -hmm. not accessible for people like me non-religious brother listen it was not only was it a pleasure but it was a freaking honor to meet you <laughs> you were yes, Likewise, everything i hoped and more one of my favorite people i've met in my travels i'm not even joking that is an amazing man right there with an amazing beautiful family an amazing story we're gonna end this day here in this uh druze village by trying to get some months out which i've never had before i do want to remind you guys though Check the description down below for Ahed's information. If you want to take a tour in Israel, take a tour in Israel with him. He's an amazing guy. I can highly recommend it. Everything will be down below in the description. So thank you again, Ahed, for the amazing day. Let's see if we can find some mansaf. So here's a Andrin restaurant. They have mansaf. You can see it over there. So mansaf, Ahed explained to me, it used to be a very uh, celebratory food here. But uh, now it's become more accustomed to just eating whenever. I've never had it before and I'm very excited. So let's try it out. Wow, wow, we was Anak. Oh my god. Jeez Louise, Mansaf. Oh my god, this is so much food. I'm not even that hungry, to be honest with you guys. This is a little bit overwhelming. Here you go. That's the that's the plate right there. You got a giant shank of lamb. Look at that dinosaur leg. Potatoes, peanuts, and rice. Now obviously this is not food for a single person. I'm gonna probably eat this for dinner tonight as well. But like, damn, look at that. It's so amazing. Look at that. So I was told again by Ahed that this is like more of a celebratory food. Let's try it out. Mm. Oh my God. Look at all that beautiful rice cooked with that lamb fat. Those flavors are to die for. And it all comes inside of a delicious Drew's pita. I don't know for a fact, but eating it the right way probably consists of picking up some of this like this with your hand and throwing it down the hatch. Wow. That fat is phenomenal. Look at the shank right here, and there she goes. Clean, wow, right off the bone. Oh my God, look at all those juices. And you know what I'm gonna do with this, right? Mm. That is another amazing day here in Daliat Al Carmel, here in the Northern Haifa Mountains of Israel. The incredible Druze village has shown me so much hospitality and kindness the last two days that I've been here. Make sure you check out Ahed, the amazing tour guide down below in the description. I'll leave all of his information there. And if you want to support this channel, you become a member by joining the channel below. And I'll see you in the next one. I love you long time, class, and goodbye.